Okay, in this particular lesson, <clears throat> it's a very important lesson for us in unit one. And it's what we call the linearization of um, equations. So quite often in physics, we're going to get graphs, right, to plot. And the tendency for our graph is for us to generally plot a linear graph. And a linear graph is what we call a straight line graph. So as, as you can see right here, this would be a linear graph. This would be a nonlinear, nonlinear graph, right? But now, in most graphs, graphs are just representing certain information. And those information sometimes come from like an equation, right? Now, we will be tasked from time to time to plot linear graphs, right? And what you would realize is that sometimes the equation that we get is what we is what we refer to as a nonlinear equation, and then now we now have to think about a way in which we can make that equation becomes a linear equation. If you remember anything about linear equations, right? A linear equation has a specific um, format. That a specific format. And this is the general structure of a linear equation that says y is equal to mx plus c. I'm going to talk about that. But let's first to say that, you know, one of the things that we must remember is that graphs are used to investigate or determine certain relationships between different variables and constants. All right. It says that the approach is usually to plot graphs of a linear equation involving the variables and the constants. So in most cases, when you plot graphs in physics, you will be tasked to more than likely plot a linear graph. So we said that the, the, the equation, the general equation for um, a linear, um, or the general form, I should say, for a linear equation is given to us as y equal mx plus c. And if you remember anything about math, we generally call this the equation, equation of a straight, straight line, all right? So when we're talking about a straight line graph, then this is the general equation. So if you're plotting a graph, what this tells us is that you will have a y variable, you're gonna have an x variable, cool? And then now with that linear graph that you're plotting, you're going to have a gradient from the line, all right? So your gradient from the line, which is equal to m, and then now you're going to have a C value, which C is what we call the Y intercept. In this case, because my line started at zero, it therefore tells me that my Y intercept is equal to zero. So C in this case would have been equal to zero. So my, my literal equation is going to be Y equal MX. Okay. But we'll talk more about that. In, in, in short order, but I just want you to understand that that's the typical equation, that's typical how the graph would look, a straight line graph. You're able to find the gradient, and we know that for a gradient, that is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So generally, you would pick two points on the graph, right? You call this your y your x1 and your y1 point, then now this second point here will be your um, x2, y2 point, okay? Now I must point out something to you as it relates to graph. We can have a linear graph looking like this, right? Going all the way like that. In this type of graph, your gradient is going to be negative. So M is going to be a negative value. Follow me? When you have a slope going up like this, you will have a positive gradient. So positive gradient. That's something for you to, to point out. Now, the reason why this becomes negative, and if you, when you plot it, you'll realize. So you generally choose your first point at this location. Take, for example, that would become your first point. So this is going to be your x1, your y1, 
Then now your second point is going to be further down here. So this is going to be um, x2, y2. So when you pick these points, and when you do your subtraction and all of that, then you're going to, you're going to realize that um, your gradient would give you a negative value. But let's just take for an example. Let's take for uh, that this corresponds to 4, and then now this point corresponds to 2. Let's call this um, 1, and let's call this five all right so let's let's see if this gradient is going to be negative so we know the general equation for, for for gradient that says m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 uh, my y1 value is four my y2 value is is um is two good my x2 value is is a uh, five and my x1 value is one so if we put that in the equation that says m is equal to y2 is two minus four divided by um five minus one when we do the math we get negative two divided by four so it then shows us that m is going to equal to negative a half so that is your gradient so that's just some common information that you know I just wanted to highlight to you so that you don't that that, that you remember that in your, if you get a graph like this it's going to be a negative gradient and obviously this one is going to give you a positive gradient all right so that's the general straight line equation where you find the gradient of that line now if, if I were to use this graph now so at this point here this would have been my y intercept your y-intercept is anywhere your line cuts the y-axis. So anywhere your line cuts the y-axis, that is referred to as your y-intercept. Sometimes you will have to do a little bit of extrapolation, meaning what if the line does not meet your y-axis, right? Then what you would do, you could use some broken lines to allow your graph or allow your straight line to reach up to that point where you can now determine your y intercept all right so that's that's another thing we could get a graph looking like this as well where it looks like so right and then now you will probably need to find your y intercept so you would just extrapolate and then now you can pick out that value to say that my y intercept c is equal to such and such of my y variable all right now yes we, we we said that you know it is much easier one of the reasons why we generally go after linear graph is that it is much easier for us to understand a linear graph when you look on a linear graph right it clearly shows you say, all right as one variable increase the other variable increase that kind of thing as one variable decrease another variable decrease that kind of thing when you look at a at a curve graph, which is a nonlinear graph, it's kind of hard for us to, to to interpret this. You know what I mean? It's are hard to, for us to tell the relationship that is taking place here. Yes, we can look at certain graphs and find out the relationship, but not in all cases. So it's best if we get the graph in a linear form, then now we can be more able to or be more susceptible to understand the information. Right. One of the things that we, we, I want to point out is that whenever you have your y variable, your y variable is always your dependent variable, right? And that goes on the y axis or the vertical axis. Now, x now, the x, the x represents your independent variable, right? And your independent variable is the one that um, is changing or what we say is the manipulated variable, right? Your dependent variable is what we call the responding variable. So that's the one that you will generally measure in the experiment and so forth. Now, M, obviously, M is a constant, and M represents our gradient, or we say the value of the slope, right? B now, as we said, is, is, our, is our Y intercept, or we could call it C. So we could represent C or B. It doesn't matter in, in this case. Now, as it relates to linear, linearization, it says that when two variables are plotted, and the resulting graph is nonlinear, 
such as if you have a power equation, you know, an exponential equation or a sinusoidal type of, type of graph, right? It is difficult for us to understand the relationship, right? And I know there are several techniques now that we can use to convert a nonlinear graph into a linear one. So one of the first method that I want to talk about here is what we call a change of variable method. Now we're looking at this equation, right? Clearly, we're seeing some variables here. We're seeing um, V, which we can represent that as our final velocity. Final velocity. Right, we can refer to V naught as our initial velocity. Right, then of course, G, which is what we call the gravity constant. gravity constant or we can say acceleration due to gravity right then now we're seeing another variable well not really another variable but yes we're seeing h h is another variable right and h speaks to height in this regard uh we're seeing two two is obviously a constant okay so you get an equation like this and i and and, and, and we say to you hey Show us what is happening here with this equation. Is this equation a linear equation? Clearly, it's not a, a linear equation because you're seeing v square, right? And then you're seeing some v naught square over here. So. so this equation on a whole does not look like a y equal mx plus c equation because you're seeing squares. You're seeing squares here so that that doesn't um cut it right so what we're what we're now saying is that we can we can linearize this by changing the variables so so rather than saying v as the variable because I, I must say something to you um this equation is really talking about the equation of free fall so let's take for example you have an object right that is falling from the sky we clearly know that that object is going to move some height. It's going to have an initial velocity v naught. It's going to have a final velocity, right? And we know acceleration due to gravity is coming down. We know that value. So the two variables that we're focused on is the height and the final velocity because the final velocity is dependent on the height. When the height is at this location, right your final velocity is your initial velocity you understand so 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 any where, wherever you go in terms of height when the object is moving down then you will have a different velocity value you understand as you as you progress all the way down to a different height value so those are the two variables that we're considering we're considering v and we're considering h your v naught is an initial value that that is not going to uh, change in the experiment because you start out with that that is that is the initial velocity right that that stays there but your final velocity can be affected by the height so clearly we want to plot v versus versus h but from this because of the equation the nature of the equation we would not get a, a straight line graph because what we're looking at here is v square versus h right so in this regard, we now have to do what we call a change of variable, um, so to speak. So rather than saying v, we're going to treat the variable, um, we're going to treat the variable or y variable as v squared. So if I make this become v squared, if I make if I make my y variable become v squared, right, then Clearly, all of v squared is going to be my y variable. Then, I know that g is a constant and 2 is also a constant. So, that takes place, that, that, that would pretty much represent what my gradient is equal to. Because what we're doing now is comparing certain things. Then, now, h is going to be my x variable, right? 
8 is going to be my x variable. I don't need to change that variable into anything because it's, there's no power beside of it. But as it relates to v naught square, I have to change that variable and say that all of this is equal to c. So at this point of the game, if I were to plot the graph, right, I would be plotting v square versus h. All right. And clearly, my y intercept would be v square naught. Now, you might be wondering, my gradient, so, so after, after plotting this graph, you can now find your gradient. Your gradient is equal to m, all right? In most of these equations, right, they actually want you to find some unknown value or they want you to prove certain things. So, so now that we can find m, right, we could actually find the value of g to prove that g is actually 9.8 and all of that. So since M is in or takes the form of 2G, meaning that when you look at the equations parallel, um, V square is parallel to Y, M is parallel to 2G, so it therefore means that M is equal to 2G. So far we said that Y is equal to v square we said that h is equal to x so we are now just comparing the things and we're saying that m is now equal to 2g cool and of course um v naught squared that is equal to c so having said this right we can literally find what g is so m is going to equal or g is going to equal to the gradient divided by 2. So whatsoever your gradient is, divided by 2 will determine what g is. So that's just the typical thing here. Now we have the equation that, that is in a, a linear form by just changing the variable. So if the variable, you know, at first was v, and from the equation you're seeing v squared, if I make v squared become the entire y variable and you know, do, do, it, do it for the other things, then that now becomes a linear. It's now in a linear form. So if I plot V square versus H, I'll get a linear equation. Rather than if I were to plot V versus H, I would not get a linear graph. All right? Yeah. So that, that, that speaks to that. There's another type of equation that you can come across, right? And it's what we call the power relation equation. If you were to ever get something like this to say that y is equal to mx um, raised to the power a, right? Then this is obviously not in a linear form. So it's going to give you a nonlinear equation. Good? In order for us to get this into a linear format, we have to use what we call the log-to-log -log method. And all that does is use some logarithmic um, principles. So if I were to go ahead and log both sides of the equation, meaning that I multiply both sides by log, I'm going to have log y equals log multiplied by m times x raised to the power a. But the log of log tells me that if I have something of this nature to say that a log of log of a dot b it is the same thing as saying log of a um, plus b also the log of log also allow me to say this what if i have log of a dot b where there is a power here let's say that x is in the power of b meaning that you're saying um, log of a um, times bx, then you could rewrite it to say log of a plus log of bx. But the log of log also tell me that I can write this as log of a plus 
um, x log b. So that, that power x can now come down. So in this case here, we can just go ahead and rewrite that to say log of m plus log of x raised to the power. But because we're dealing with logs, logs tell me that I can take this power and bring it down in front. You understand? So at the end of the day, we are left with log of y is equal to log of m plus a times log log x. At this point, we have an equation that we can call it a linear equation, right? First, one of the things we must realize is that y is my y variable, x is my x variable. At this point, I can call log y my y variable. I can call log x my x variable because that is log x. Then now the value beside log x, that is going to be my m value, which is my gradient. And then now obviously, um, log of m is going to be my c value, which is going to be a constant. So at the end of the day, when you're plotting the graph, right, you're going to plot log of y time uh, versus log of x, where we're now saying that the gradient m is equal to a. So whatsoever, you, whatsoever the gradient is, it corresponds to what a is equal to. So I'm saying so, so sometimes you get that type of equation where you need to find out what um, what A is, you know, and so you could use this entire scenario, providing that the equation is given as such. Once the equation is given to us as such, then that is what you would do. There's another type of equation that we can get, and it is when you have an exponential relation. So let's take, for example, you have to say that um, that y is equal to a e raised to um, raised to k times x. Now, obviously, y is my y variable, x is my x variable. X is all the way up in the power. This is obviously not in the linear format. So to get this in the linear format, now we have to do the semi-log, or we call it the, you know, anti-log, so to speak. Well, not anti-log, but um, uh, preferably say the semi-log, right? Or using the ln method, right? The natural log method. So by using the natural log method, it tells me that it's the same thing similar to the log method. However, in this case, we're finding the natural log. So if you look somewhere on your calculator, you will see a function that says ln. That is what we call the natural log, right? Right. So we're saying the natural. We're going to natural log both sides. So ln um, y is equal to ln a e raised to k x. Now we, we we based on what we said a while ago about the log thing, we can also expand this, right? Because we're seeing a multiplication here. So whenever we're seeing some type of multiplication taking place because a is multiplying the exponent of k x so with that being said we could we could expand it right so whenever you have a multiplication in log you can expand it to to, to be a, a, an addition so in this case it will become ln a plus ln e raised to k x Remember, we said that whatsoever is in the power, that power can come, come in front. So let me write this to say that ln y is equal to ln a plus um, ln e k x. So let's bring that now to a point of, um, you know, where we can see that. So ln a comes back. Then now we're taking whatsoever is in the power. So we have now plus k x ln e now ln and e 
they are like the opposite of each other. So when you have Ellen and you have E together, they 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 pretty much um they pretty much are saying like you have one divided by one. You understand what I say? So so it's like once you see Ellen and the exponent being multiplied together, right? Then that is just telling us that this thing here is equal to one. So if that's the case, we can say ln and e cancels out, leaving us with ln y equal to ln a plus, um, uh, what is this now? K x. Now I can see my y variable. I mean, my x variable is right here. The variable beside that is going to be m. Then now plus c, right? Then now all of this here will be my y variable. So at the end of the day, when you're plotting that graph, you're plotting x versus ln, ln y, good, where we're now saying that the gradient, I can use the gradient to find what k is. So whatever my gradient is, that is what k is equal to. Then what if no, what if we, 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 we were to tell you, say, hey, um, find the value of a. If I if I go ahead and say find the value of a, what you would do is to let me, let me draw the graph here. So this is your c intercept. Good. So you could look on the graph to find what the value of c is. Now remember that ln a is equal to c. Good. So if I want to find C, then, no, if I want to find A, what I would have to do, I would have to get rid of Ellen. Remember? So, so we want to find A in this case. We can find C from the graph, which is your y-intercept. So once you find C, you know that C is equal to Ellen A. So having said this, then we can ask you to find what is A. So all you would need to do to get rid of ln, you would multiply by E on both sides. So remember, E is talking about the exponent. So because you have E multiplying by ln, that cancels out, leaving you with A. And then now you have E raised to the power C. All right? Because, you know, whenever you have the exponent, there's always some, the, the next thing that, that is beside of it is go, goes in the power. So you have E raised to C. So that is what you would, we would have done here. Find the exponent of both sides. Exponent and ln cancels out, leaving us with A equal um, EC, or E raised to the power C. Now, a few examples, and these are certain things that you, these are some equations that you know already, right? We could say t is equal to 2 pi um, times the square root of L divided by G. You could get this equation. And they say, plot a graph, right, of t square versus L. Firstly, by looking at this equation, this equation has no, no bearings related to um, t squared and L like that. You're not seeing that right now. But the best thing that we could do to make this become t squared is to square both sides. All right. So by squaring both sides, I now have t squared equal to... Um, now, this square is squaring everything in the bracket. So we have 4 pi squared. Now, the square and the square root cancels out, leaving me with L divided by G. Now, quite frankly, this equation or this graph is going to be a linear graph, right? So, what it tells us is that this is my Y variable, L is my X variable. Whatsoever is remaining, that becomes my constant M. So, at the end of the day, we're saying that T squared is equal to Y. L is equal to X. M is equal to 4 pi squared divided by G. 
Now with this equation, clearly there's no y-intercept, which just tells us that the line passes through zero, all right? Now when you find the gradient of this line, we're saying that your gradient is equal to four pi squared divided by g. Quite often, we get an equation like this to, to prove and to find the value of g. So if we were to transpose, g would become 4 pi squared divided by m. So that's just a one example how we can linearize this equation. Cool? Right? So that's one type. Then now, if, if I get another equation, such as, such as um, this one, that says x is equal to a half g t squared. Clearly, by looking at this, it's not in the um, linear format because you have x and you have t squared, right? So all you just need to do is to just change of variable. So you would have t squared being your x variable. Clearly, g times a half is going to be m, and then now x is going to be your y variable. So on your graph, you would have x, whatever x is, x would be some displacement value. And then now t squared goes on this axis. When you find your gradient, when you find your gradient m, m corresponds to a half g. So this is another way we could find, prove that g is equal to such and such, right? So by just manipulating that, you can say that um, the gradient is equal to 2m, all right? Now, I want you to pay attention to this last part. This one is going to be very important for you guys. Let's suppose that I say, hey, plot a graph of um, f versus 1 upon r squared, right? This it's coming from an equation that we have come across that says f is equal to g times m times small m divided by r squared. So when you see this, this equation, this is talking about the, the, the Newton's um, law of universal gravitation, I believe that's what we call it. Yeah. So the, this is the, the whole, um, you know, we call it the, the gravitational force equation, right? Now, you could get an equation like this as well, or you could get a scenario where you need to plot a graph, and they told you that the variables on the graph is f um, versus one upon t squared, right? All they're really doing here is separating the variables. So we know that this is our y variable, right? If I were to plot um, f versus T, um, R squared, I would not get a straight line graph. The best way to get a straight line graph is to plot um, F versus 1 upon R squared. So it's like you're, you're, we're saying that 1 upon R squared is a variable by itself, and that is multiplied by G times M times M. So if you treat this as a variable by itself, right, it's almost like you're saying that um, f is directly proportional to the, the inverse of t squared, or 1, up, or one upon um, r squared. So that's what they're really saying here. So at this point, they have literally linearized the equation. They have linearized the equation, or we have linearized the equation to say that y is equal to m well, that is not M, my bad. But that is that is the X portion. So this is the X variable. And what is remaining becomes your M variable. Good. So after you plot in this graph and everything, they could say, hey, what is the mass of, take for example, the satellite, right? Or something of that nature. Then you can clearly see that your gradient is equal to M let me use the word gradient. Gradient is equal to m uh, g times where g is the 
universal gravity constant. And then now m will generally speak to the mass of the Earth. And then now this small m speaks to the mass of the satellite. So with this being said, you could find the mass of the satellite to say that the gradient divided by g times m is equal to small m. All right? So just be mindful that when you see these type of things, we're just trying to make things become a linear equation. And this is another way you could, you could factor out certain things. You're changing the variable. So rather than saying um, one, you know, rather than saying F versus T squared, which would not give you a linear graph, right? By saying one divided by R squared, that would give you a linear graph, so to speak. So this comes to a point where we can call it an end for this lesson. Pay attention to that part for me, please. Thank you very much.